Hello, and welcome to a very special installment of Grasping Scripture. This is the first of an Advent series that I'm doing this year. I hope you find it edifying. It's not quite the same style as the other uh, podcasts we've been doing that are study through passages of Scripture. This is dealing more with the Advent season. Of course, the Advent is the celebration of the coming of the Christ, the arrival of the Christ child, and what that meant for and means for all of us today, a gift from God to all of humanity. The format I'm going to use is to share just a few passages of scripture with you as a tool for you to begin reflecting on those passages of scripture and on the theme for the week. This week, it is dealing with the theme of prophecy, or you might want to refer to it as hope. That is the the prophecies or the hope of the coming Messiah. And so we're going to look at these passages together today, and then I'll reflect a few moments on it and close us in prayer. Thank you for joining me today for the first of this special series. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah 9, verse 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Isaiah 60, verses 1-3 through When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. As we take time this week to consider the coming of the Christ, as we focus on the prophecies of Scripture, we need to remember that prophecy is rooted in the promises of God, and that the Bible is a book filled with the promises of God. So as we come to worship God this week, we need to come with everything we are and everything we have, and we need to realize God has made many wonderful promises to His children. And he will be faithful to keep every one of them. We have seen this in the coming Christ and the coming of the Christ. We have seen a light dawn in the darkness. From the very beginning, God has been that light, that light which is life. And although our sin has separated humanity from God, the promise of the Advent, these prophecies looking towards that day of the coming of the Christ, they point to God healing that divide, providing a way of salvation through Christ for all of humanity who would turn to Him. It starts in Genesis. In the very beginning, God created. Why did he create? He created us for relationship with him. He made all the difference from the very first verse of Scripture. And although Isaiah is speaking of the nation of Israel, his words also apply in a very real sense to us today. That we may, in fact, be a people walking in darkness, but a great light has dawned. Even though our lives may seem hopeless, it may seem like there is no out from this 
conflict and division and, and pain and suffering that we are mired in. The truth is there is hope. There is promise. There is a great light that has dawned, and that light is Christ. And he will draw all nations and kings to the brightness of his dawn. How do we know that? The words of Jesus. In this passage that I read from John chapter 8, Jesus makes it clear, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Salvation is found in Christ and in Christ alone. The promise of Christmas isn't presents under a tree. It's not the hymns and carols. And I I love all those things. I love the trappings of the season. You should see my yard right now. I You could probably see it from space. I mean, it's, it, yeah, I go all out on the Christmas lights. I enjoy that. But all of that pales in comparison with the true light of Christmas. That light being Jesus, the Christ. And scripture is filled with the promises of the coming Christ and what it would mean for all of us. We, living on the other side of that history, are able to look back and celebrate with 2,000 years of history of what the dawning of that light has meant and means today and will mean in the future. Because the God who was faithful in the past is faithful today, will be faithful in the days to come. It is in him we find our hope and our peace and our everything. Take time this season to step back from all that's going on, from all the marketing, from all the tradition. Step back and focus on the promise of God, that promise being found in the person of Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, that you came and dwelt among us in the flesh. God with us, Emmanuel. Father, we thank you that you have given us the promise of prophecy. Throughout Scripture, you have told us that we would not always be apart from you, that we would not always be in the broken relationship with you, but that you would provide a way of salvation. You would provide a way of paying for our sin that would restore our relationship. And Lord, we know that now to be Jesus the Christ, and we thank you for that awesome gift as we celebrate Christmas. We thank you for Jesus the Christ and for the gift of your word that helps us to know him. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Just a simple closing note on this podcast. And that is that I know it's an Advent podcast. I know we're dealing with the Christmas season. And I would love to have some music associated with this podcast. But my apologies for very simple licensing reasons. That's not doable. So I encourage you, as you meditate upon these chapters or these verses of Scripture, as you spend time in prayer, find a music that that speaks to your heart. Uh, I would encourage songs like O Come, O Come, Emmanuel for this week to be good resources to maybe help focus your attention a little bit and enrich this study. So I would encourage you to use such things. Thank you. And thank you for listening.